episode 16. We finally made it to the episode. Yep. Enchanting Grom fight fright. This this is the episode. Again, I may I may have said this earlier in our recordings, but th this was literally the episode that got me to watch the Owl House. This was it was it was after after the premiere, but before um, the next one. I stayed up and watched all of the first season up until this point, and yeah, this is this is the one that that got me on board. I think um, got everyone on board. Yeah, Brock, give me give me your general thoughts on this episode. I did like it a lot, but I'm going to be honest. That moment lost a little bit for me because of, in my opinion, it was a bit obvious <laughs> and that moment is kind of treated as you're supposed to be surprised at that <laughs> to a certain degree the it is still great it's still a great moment but part of it to me was like i got that already <laughs> but it is still a great moment it is still a great episode especially considering the episode that directly preceded this. Yeah. Didn't exactly leave a whole lot to the imagination. Yeah. But so no, it's still a good episode. Um to to that to that point, one one thing um that you know not a lot of people know about the animation process is that it's not it's not like that, that like these episodes are are done in sequential order there like there are like pieces of it that are of episodes that are done kind of yeah throughout its production mm -hmm. um so that's why you may you may see like some inconsistencies between between episodes but i, I wouldn't say it's inconsistent i just it seemed like it was more obvious it had been let on oh yeah no i i i get that and yeah Go, going back and rewatching this season, yeah, you you pick you pick up on a lot of the the cues earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like um, going back to the episode "Lost in Language," um, there 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 was a moment that I knew right away that oh something was up between these two, you know, and Am Amity was kind of laughing at at Luz being, you know trying to be heroic but failing yes like that like that was just one of those moments like oh okay yeah i i, I know where, where they're going with this oh yeah of course it didn't help that again i started the show late so some of this was kind of spoiled for me through osmosis and this running at the same time as another popular show that has a incredibly popular and incredibly wanted the lesbian ship in it oh yeah so you, i've heard you through osmosis hear comparators and cheering from both sides for different things <laughs> um but no there's there's actually more to this episode than just that moment because again even even, even the b story is kind of firing on all cylinders Mm -hmm. because King okay so if you haven't seen the episode first of all I don't know why why you're here unless you just don't care about spoilers yeah but just in case the basic premise of this episode is Grom is the Boiling Isles version of prom mm -hmm. um, but the twist is that the Grom queen or king um has to face their greatest fear what what that is is well whatever that character's greatest fear is but what i like about the b the b plot is king kind of has his own fear to face because apparently the king of demons has stage fright yes bad bad stage fright and I think that's probably one of his most relatable moments. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we all we all get stage fright, or we've had to overcome it at least once oh, in yeah. our lifetime. Absolutely. But I just I just love how like how much that B plot kind of it it, it ties in nicely with the A plot because the whole the whole episode is about facing your fears, but doing so in different fashions. That doesn't mean this this episode isn't, isn't still funny though, because no, because no. during the training sequences, Luz has to face some of her less less um, debilitating fears, like de debate debating trolls online, um, humans trapped in yeah. cat in cat bodies, and no, because he's lost to us in holler. Yes. Of course. Of course. And it is kind of fun to see um, Edric and Emra pop up again. Because mm -hmm. yeah. af after their first appearance, they just become they, they just become more likable doofuses. Well, Edric mostly. Now here's a question. What is your greatest fear? Dying alone. Failure. Not being good, not feeling good enough. Mm -hmm. This will go down deep. You want to go down deep? And <laughs> I, I actually kind of have both both of those as like as my greatest fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. You just don't try to think of or, or should say mention it often. Anyways, on a lighter note, <laughs> the moment, the beautiful yes, the moment. moment, the low key gay moment. Oh, there's low nothing key. low key about it. <laughs> the gay moment. <laughs> I think you busted the keys clean out the piano. Thank you very much. Got like this is like when in Ruby they're like, guys, Bumblebee is a song about her motorcycle. She's she's talking about being in a garden of ecstasy with her motorcycle. It's not about Blake. Trust me, it's about her motorcycle. Like, yeah, sure. Me, I totally believe you. Like when this scene happened the first time, and it was like all over the internet. I got very similar to like Steven Universe vibes. Hmm. And like for me, I'm like Steve. Like for me to see how, like how shows are now, I'm like Steven Universe walked so other shows can hit the ground running. Because let's be honest, we probably would have never had something like this. I never got on the Steven well, like, Universe. Uh, I was going to say, I don't know what damn thing about Steven Universe. Pretty I mean, much I've, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of its influence because... Yeah, that's what you pretty much need to know. That's why, like, what, like, we were talking about the last episode, how, like, Sailor Moon in the 90s, they made the gay lesbians very close cousins because censorship and TV shows were a thing. Now we can have gay stuff in children's shows. Like... Part of it, oh boy, let's reset the clock. I'm mentioning Gurn again. Like, uh, it's it's still weird for me to be like in 2008. They had an openly trans a transsexual mechanic for the entire crew. Who is like the fifth build highest main character in the show, and no one said a word. Yeah, was like certain stuff is weird. Like in Powerpuff Girls, him that was pretty much. Yeah. The, like original Powerpuff Girls, him is pretty much like a transgender person, but no one bad or not. But the moment we saw gay people, everyone got up in a row. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just felt like Steven Universe had that opportunity to like show the gay characters. Because mm -hmm. at the time, like Adventure Time was a really big show. And Marsley and Bubblegum, you can tell that they were lesbians, but they couldn't like really confirm it. It was like in between the lines mm -hmm. because of the censorship. And then once the big impact Steven Universe had, they pretty much made them kiss. 
And I'm like, that probably would have never happened if something like Steam Universe was able to give it, like, a show was given the opportunity to show gay characters. Yeah, and Rebecca Sugar had to had to fight for that moment, too. <sighs> like, I love her. <laughs> for that in mainstream American cartoons, you just had moments like in the flat, in Justice League where the Flash is crushing on fire and someone goes up to her, I don't know, I've heard she's Brazilian. <laughs> yeah, it's and especially to see in that in a Disney channel show. Mm-hmm. I was like, finally, Disney, you someone given a chance on all at, this. At at the at the time of, of this episode's release, I, I kind of in in praising this episode, I also gave shade to Disney for and this isn't really their fault, but it it happens every time in the media. When, when they find when they when we hear about Disney's first gay character, and how we've had we've had like seven different first gay characters in a, in a row, and mm-hmm. how like every time people up and up, up like I remember way back like there was a t- um TV show on Disney Channel called Good Luck Charlie, and one episode like. Charlie had like a friend, and her friend has two moms. Mm-hmm. They saw the two moms for five seconds, and this like the actress was like a five year old child at the time, got death threats because of it. In the live <laughs> action Beauty and the Beast movie, people were up in an uproar because LaFru was apparently gay. The scene in question that everyone got in a huge uproar. Was him dancing with a guy, and I'm like, dude, in the originals, in the original animated, you can tell if it was so gay for Gaston, it was so obvious. So like, what's the big deal now? Mm-hmm. Like, or or how or how about in Lightyear, where you know during a montage, you you see for like two seconds, um, one one of Buzz's friends, um, in in yeah, a gay it, relationship, yeah. And mm-hmm. people like in a giant. I'm like, I don't, dude. I don't understand. It's not what someone else is. It's not okay. So that's it's why just coming from a still church going Christian of 32 years old. I don't care. Just because it doesn't conform to my beliefs, guess what? I'm not magically going to be it because I watched someone else enjoy something. For the love of God, this is so stupid. So like seeing Disney taking like a chance at the time, I was like, finally. Like they're giving it a full chance and not doing like what they did with Lesnar of Chorus is kind of like the moment it kind of showed like gay characters. They just took it off the show and just put it all up online. Or it's like immediately like just not care about the show and advertise it. So or the point that both me and Mike know about that made me want to burn down DC Comics. Let's go out of our way to hype up this wedding of Kate Kane, Batwoman, for the longest time, only to at the day of their wedding have her be possessed and then call the whole thing off just because superheroes can't have happiness, other words, and we wanted to call off a lesbian marriage. I I remember a lot of people online basically seeing red when when they heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, like, give your like give your like writers a show. It's like give the show a chance. Like you people want money, have shows like this. Let it hit the ground running. Like. It's good to make you money. <laughs> here's the thing. So I'll stay on this subject because there's versions of this I hate and versions of it that I like. I am okay if you have this stuff in shows where it's just in the show and you don't make a giant deal of it. If the only reason you are putting it in the show and then the entire point of the show is the fact that you have a gay person, I hate it. The entire show should not serve as the fact that a gay character is in it. It should be the fact that you're just okay with having gay characters in your show. You should not 
make the whole purpose of the entire show be, I wanted to be this because that's that's doing the exact opposite of you wanting this to be a normal thing. If you go out of your way to say it's special because blank is in it, yeah, that's not what you want. <laughs> what one, I try to one explain more... that to people, and they don't get what I mean. <laughs> one one more thing I'll mention before we um, before we kind of pivot away from this is I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, the YouTube channel Council of Geeks, but they put they put out a great video today about how quantity of representation will will lead to better representation and how the the reason why there's like so much scrutiny over over like the crumbs that we've that we've gotten so far is because you know we only like there's only been so few examples but if we get more shows like this like ruby mm -hmm. that normalize um the lgbtq community then there 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 will be there will be less pressure for each one to be great they can just they can just exist and it won't be it won't be such an issue now that being said uh the dance the dance sequence is phenomenal it's it is another example of when the animation ramps up to 11. Yeah. Yeah, that was very well done. I like that quite a bit. And, and also, once again, I have to point out Ida's ev evolution to pretty much becoming the full, the full Mama Witch. Mm hmm. I gotta say, she she rocks that suit nicely. She does. Yes, she does. That is one thing I'm quite the fan of: women that can properly pull off a tux. I'm just saying. She can pull off anything. She can. Also, we gotta talk about Luce's mom somehow getting letters. Yeah, that was gonna be her the name thing on that, it. that to me was the biggest revelation of this: a that she's most terrified of her mother, and she's finally talking to her. And that she's getting letters from a person that can't spell her name correctly. <laughs> and she's telling her mother that yet, and I did pause it to read it, <laughs> that she's learning about mortgages at summer camp. Oh, right. <laughs> I, because I, I, I remember. I remember in it, uh... the box. <laughs> um. You know what? We'll 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 um we'll we'll, we'll make an, another another bet on this. Um, who who do you think is sending those letters? Unless there's a character I haven't been introduced to, the only one that knows that Luce's mom exists is Ada. And the only one that knows how to, unless it's again a character I haven't been introduced to and is spying on her. The only one at this point that knows how where Luce is from is Ada. <laughs> so, do you think that Ada is sending these letters to, um, I don't know, take. Uh... So, her mom still thinks she's in summer. I'm thinking that it's being sent, so she's throwing her off the hook because I think Ada would be the only person that would be okay enough and lazy enough to send a letter that a she didn't ask loose how to spell her name she had the letter wrote and then crossed it out and then wrote loose correctly underneath it <laughs> it's something i could see ada doing and it is too well written to be written by king <laughs> <laughs> poor king <laughs> He is king and queen, best of both things. Let him be. He is, but he would not be telling Luce's mom that he is that she is learning about mortgages. She would be learning about how to kill the beans in the wild. <laughs> he were also True. right. I learned that the earth is flat because the internet says so. Take the phone away. <laughs> you have interneted too much today. 
Oh yeah. Um, he wants to before, go before, like, before stupid, he and he does the same it. thing. Um, their their version of YouTube is Mew, is Mewtwo. Mewtwo. Yeah, Mew Mewtube. And <laughs> I, I I imagine it's it's just a YouTube that's just cat videos. I like how it's not. It's from the human world, but we're still not calling it YouTube. It's not the their version of it. <laughs> That's their version of YouTube is called the human version of YouTube in this is called YouTube. <laughs> that that that's that's always fun when 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 shows that like that take place in like a regular world still kind of use fake yeah. fake uh product placement. Also, the disco ball. Yes. The poor guy. He's been so, hanging there for 36 hours. Um, what happened? <laughs> Are you sure that's um, their version of YouTube? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> the idiot box at my fingertips, as my um, good friend Doug Thomas likes to call it. <laughs> They're adorable, though. They are. I mean, look, I mean, look at them. <laughs> it's literally, it's literally TikTok for cat videos. <laughs> Interface. Oh. It's the same thing. It's wow. ripped clean off. It's literally TikTok. Is that just on the, uh, video. Is that even, can I get that on the Apple Store? Can I get that on my? <laughs> it's literally just on the Google Play App Love Store. You on TikTok when you can watch cat videos. It's just TikTok <laughs> for cat videos. I'd rather be on that. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> It's not even a. It's not even trying to hide it. The exact interface is star the same. Share for you and following is exactly the same. Oh, cat videos. It's okay because it's cat videos. All right. Um, we should probably wrap this up before the train falls off the cliff. Before, before we do it right now. <laughs> before the rails more. We started this batch of recording sessions with me showing you cursed images. <laughs> Yeah, yeah like, when you look at your phone and laugh, I thought like you had an inappropriate joke, and I was like, "Oh dear God!" No, I'm not gonna go off on a 10 minute pure <laughs> Sean having sex with Pura's mom because he's old enough now. Tangent. I literally broke her. When you get to a point of watching Ruby, there is a, about 10 minute section of a review video where I had her in stitches falling out of her chair. I was I gone could... for 10 minutes laughing. I I was. I was high we on life. We started it completely <laughs> off the rails that, that episode. And then we got artwork the next week of it. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm not surprised we got artwork of the hoodie. It was fully colored this time, too. I was quite shocked. Okay. One one more thing before we wrap this up. Um, the, the Amity and Hootie rivalry. Team or Amity you, for the win. If if your bird tube <laughs> refers to me one more time. <laughs> I, I love I love forgot the last episode. I've been talking about a hero story. Hoot, 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 hoot. I, I, the, I love Hootie, but see, if I season, ever got my dream of being a voice actor, that would be the level of stupidity I would want. <laughs> Why, that's why I'm jealous of Alex Hirsch because he he honestly voices two of the best characters on this on the show. God. If I got to go into work every day and do that, I think I would die of happiness every day. So, so final thoughts on this episode? It was really good. Like I said, that was my only minor gripe was that it wasn't as much of a pin drop moment as it could have been because there was a there wasn't breadcrumbs. There was full loaves of bread being dropped <laughs> in the lead up to this. Why had breadcrumbs where you just had the baguette out on the table already? Don't get, you no. know, 
I want my souls to hit me with the loaf of bread, okay? I want the souls to hit me with a bag, like a baguette, okay? There was there was more plot that dropped around it, and they had a just a light confirmation on other things. They had other things popping up. So yeah. Yes, but yeah. we're all gay. Yes. Gay. Um, gay and it doesn't stop it doesn't stop here because Oh no. <laughs> the next episode. I, I, oh, I'm just gonna say that it, the next episode. World out it just kind of gets gayer from here with certain stuff that's all i'm gonna say kind of gets yep. gay with certain things and then the season three because it got canceled this is give the biggest f you and just made it hella gay yeah, in the best possible way of saying f you disney there's moments when i have to look up because i'm storing the um uh what i want to say thumbnails in advance <laughs> the captions below photos and how they don't understand the difference between episode one, or I should say season one episode blank and season two episode blank. <laughs> Gives me a shadow into other things. And like, again, because of Ruby, I was made aware of certain things. And like I told you last time, I now know she gets a purple haircut. So I've seen things happen when she has purple hair. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. but we'll cross that bridge when we get there for now mm -hmm. Isao where can everyone find you online you can find me on Twitter or wherever it's called at this time at Kibalova028 and Brock where can everyone find you you can find me on the social media platform formerly known as Twitter Twitch and YouTube at Organoid Zero and you can find me on all the various social media sites at CaptainK42 you can check out my quick thoughts on letterbox.com slash CoachK42 and you can follow Renegade Pop Culture on Facebook and that place at Ren Pop Culture. You can also find us on YouTube, on Podchaser. Subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash renegade pop culture. Listen to all of our podcasts on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen. And last but not least, everything can be found at renegadepopculture.com. Need escape? So do we. And until next time, bye! bye. bye.